Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Oh, you got that lucky 1313 on day two, man. All right, guys, so we had 13 pounds, 13 ounces. We finished in 63rd place. Uh, we made a little money. That's our first check out of the first two stops on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. And uh, it's good to make some money and, and head the right direction. But I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a recap of the baits I use, the tackle I used. Uh, I get asked to do this a lot, and I quit doing it for a while, so I'm going to start doing it again. Anyway, probably my go-to bait that I caught the most fish on in the tournament. Uh, Kind of mixed it up in, in both days but it was definitely a chatter bait and this here is a seeker uh, by motion fishing uh, i tried a different trailers on it i had uh i had a fork tail bait and then i had a boot tail bait too um but you could just slow reel it across that hydrilla um a lot of hydrilla i caught them both on hydrilla and eelgrass the eelgrass when i got in it uh the presentation i liked better uh, was more worming it or kind of yo-yoing it stroking it so I'd let it free fall and that's when the boot tail came in better because when that free falls and you're not reeling it and the chatterbait and the blade's not clicking that boot tail will swim down to the bottom and it keeps that looking like a real bait um, but I would just stroke that up in the air and let it free fall most of the times as I picked it up and as soon as I let it as soon as I killed it, it started to free fall I'd feel that hard thump and jerk it up right by one's face and get him to react to it it's like that Big. It was a really fun bite. Um, I also did that in the holes of the hydrilla, uh, but I also had some success just reeling it. You know, just just slow retrieve. Wait till you hit the grass. You know, kind of stop it, pause it, keep it kind of erratic. I don't like just a steady retrieve. I like to feel the grass and pop it and rip it and just keep that fish kind of uh, interested in it. Um, I threw that on a couple different rods. This this setup here was a Kissler rod, Kissler reel. This is the feeling reel. This is a 7.2 medium heavy feeling reel. Uh, I was throwing on 17 pound fluorocarbon. I uh, had the Kistler Series 1 reel on it. It's a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, I really like being able to get that fish in and out of that grass fast, so I don't like a slow gear ratio if I'm fishing in grass. I like to get them out of there because uh, so that one fish I caught, it got really balled up, and I brought the whole bottom, the ro whole root system of the hydrilla came up with it. Unfortunately, my big bubba net could net it all, and I caught that fish. That was a key fish. That was like three and a half pounders. So. Well, I got him and the whole bottom with him. Man. Holy crap. Holy crap, I got the whole bottom. Boy, that stinks. I mean, it smells awful. Uh, that was that setup. The other thing I caught a whole bunch of fish on is this yum thumping dinger. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the typical speed worm type setup. What's unique about a thumping dinger is... Uh, a lot of these other kind of swimming worm styles, the worm's solid. If you see here, there's a little bit of slit. There's a little slit in that rib, in the rib of that worm. And what that does is allows when you set the hook uh, on that fish, that shank of that worm goes into that slit. That worm settles into that, and it allows that hook to stick out further. So you get more hook to penetrate the fish's mouth. If that didn't have that slit there, that would consume a lot of the shank of that hook. So that thumping dinger and the yum dinger, all the dinger products have that extra slit in there, uh, which which helps you with uh, getting more hook out of the plastic of the bait and into the mouth of the fish. God, he come at me fast. Oh, he wasn't coming off forever. Uh, I had this set up in two different weights, depending on what I wanted to do. I had a quarter ounce weight, and then I also had a 5 16th ounce weight. Uh, for when I wanted it to fall a little faster and, and get through the hydrilla or the grass I was fishing. But for the most part, I like that quarter ounce weight. I like it really light. I like that bait just fluttering around uh, and try not to stir up the sediment when the bait lands on the bottom. Uh, I had a June bug color and I was also catching them on a black blue shadow. Uh, a lot of fish came on the black blue shadow. Uh, I had that paired on, this is a Z-Bone, 7.6, light, medium, heavy. Um, it's it's pretty solid it's got quite a bit of backbone for a light medium heavy it's more like a medium heavy but i like it, it has that fast direction tip 17 pound fluoro um kistler series one reel 7.3 to one but i like having that seven six rod because them fish would hit it in that grass and by the time you reeled down to hit them they may have swam through the grass quite a bit so that extra length of that rod helped take up the slack of that line and then the other bait this one this one broke my heart but i had a lot of good success with this bait in pre-practice and i lost a giant on it in the tournament uh, but this is just the yum dinger. I had it set up on a four-out flipping hook with a half-ounce weight. 
what I was doing with this setup, this is 20 pound fluorocarbon, 7.6, uh, heavy action rod. This is a Z-Bone by Kistler, series one reel again with a 7.3 to one gear ratio. Uh, all these Texas rig baits that I have, uh, I had the weight pegged. You really don't want that weight to separate from the bait very often when you're fishing grass um, or else the bait, the weight falls through and the bait doesn't and you get some separation there between you and the fish if you get a bite. But this here I was punching isolated little clumps of hydrilla. I had, I had a couple areas um, that were turned out to be really, really good and I wish I would have fished them. Um, but I only gave myself a little bit of time. Turns out uh, second and third place came off of that area. And uh, that's, you know, that's what we do as fishermen. We have, uh, we, we think about it in hindsight, you know, uh, what we could have done different to have a better event. But we caught fish the whole time we were there so we feel good about it. But anyway. That's what this is, is a 4 out flipping hook. Uh, this is the 5 inch Yum Dinger, June Bug color. And I was just flipping it out there. I was using my Lawrence Active Target. I could see that isolated patch of hydrilla. I flip it and try to hit it right in the middle of the hydrilla and it would just dart straight through it all with that half ounce weight. And those fish uh, at that time were buried up in that. You couldn't necessarily see them in the hydrilla, but as soon as it got through there, before it even got to bottom, they would hit it really hard. Um, but that big one, I actually watched it on Active Target. I actually hopped it out of the hydrilla and it followed it out, and I was able to get that fish to bite it. Eat it. You're looking at it. There he is. That's a big one. Please stay hooked. No! Guys, I can't tell you how much that hurts. And uh, anyhow, so that's what this, that's that's all it was, guys. I caught a ton of fish. Um, I just did not get that Florida big bite in the boat. I got that big bite on day one. Uh, I lost three fish on day one that all would have got us in the uh, made the day three cut. Any of those fish, but. Uh, Anyhow, uh, it, it, solid derby, caught a lot of fish, uh, had a lot of time to practice. I expected to do better than I did, but I'm still happy making some money. And uh, now I'm actually here at Pickwick today. Uh, I've never seen this lake before. I'm about to put in here and do a little bit of exploring before it goes off limits. And uh, anyway, so thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, this summary, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.